chances to take and many rules you must break you have to cheat everyone to survive in the Midas run try and should say you could be taken away if you should lose it's no fun but that's life in the Midas run try and remember love could come to confuse you it might amuse you but you'd lose the game there's one more thing I should say you could be taken away if you should lose it's no fun but that's life in the Midas run in the Midas run in the Midas run Did he get it? What do you think? Oh, I am sorry, John. I really am. Sorry about what? Your knighthood. I see you have been passed over again. <laughs> that, of course. If the Queen, in her infinite wisdom, chooses to ignore me, there's really nothing we can do about it. Is there, Worcester? Well, there's always next year. One never knows, does one? Oh, but I am awfully sorry about this year. Oh, I'm sure of that, my dear Worcester. We all know you're a young man of such apparent sensibility. Well, uh, we'll see you at the club later on. Mm, I'll try and pop in if I can. Excuse me. An urgent message from home, sir. Thank you. If I hold, I'm caught in a vice. If I pull back, I'm hit with Patton's third army on one flank and the Canadians on the opposite flank. A perfect entrapment. Diabolical. That fellow Warden is a cold-blooded sadist. He's done it again, sir. Seems so. Beaten by an American seems to be the thing nowadays. Perhaps I'll go back to chess. It's just not our day, sir. Perhaps a glass of sherry? No, I'll settle for a good dinner. Very well, sir. Thank you. Oh, if I may say so, Mr. Pedley, it's an outrage about the armistice. After all these years. Thank you. Oh, uh, Wells, come here a moment, will you, please? Yes, sir? Um, that other book that Professor Warden sent us, that novel that can't seem to get published, did you read it? Oh, yes, sir, yes. What did you think of it? Well, speaking frankly, sir, I didn't understand a word of it. But then we are not supposed to nowadays, are we? No, I suppose not. But he is an extremely resourceful young man, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, sir, yes, extremely. Would you like to meet him? Audacious. Inventive. He's quite the young warrior. No more war! 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 I'm on an open new bridge, so I can't hear you. I 
academic stink hole, I quit! Go live! Maybe I'm a little hot-tempered for philosophy. Venice. Venice in the spring. Glorious. Glorious Palmer. Palmer, they're going to publish my book! A 90-degree turn on the offensive axis. I must say, I scarcely expected that. John Pedley. A great pleasure, Mr. Warden. <laughs> Mike, please. Mike. Well, I've been waiting to see you. Come on, sit down. Thank you. Um, they told me at your hotel I might find you here. Yeah, well, I thought I'd get a little sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Negroni. Do it. Si, si. Grazie. A year and a half fighting you through the mails, and we finally meet. I'm delighted. Nothing like a war to make friends. Actually, I'm rather fond of Americans. Like Mr. Churchill, my own mother was one of yours. Although I dare say he survived it a bit better than I. I'm sorry to keep you waiting about like this, but my friend Leacock just got into town today. He's the Daniela. When can I see him? Well, we can bring him up now and make an appointment for you. Good. Tomorrow. By time. Shalom, Lord. Prego, signore. Oh, thank you. Warden? Yes. I'm uh, Ray Fleacock. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? <laughs> well, would you like to sit down? Uh, yeah, thank you. Would you care for a drink? Yeah, uh, scotch if you have it. 
course. <laughs> My apologies for the delay in our meeting. Mr. John told me you've been here for several days. Yeah, a week. Yes, well, I had a publisher's convention in, uh, in Brussels. <laughs> it's hard to get away from one's colleagues. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're uh, not joining me? Uh, well, no, I uh, just have a cigarette. <laughs> well, now, Mr. Warden. I want to say something to you most sincerely. We like your manuscript. Oh, yes, very much. It's, uh, it's quite original. Oh, thank you. And I want you to know right away that we intend to have it on our schedule soon. But you see, things are just a little bit sticky with us, you know, right now. <laughs> sticky? Yes, well, you see, it's the common market in that unhappy man in Paris. You see, it's a terribly uncertain time for books. <laughs> Not with the telly. <laughs> You see, actually, we're rather a small firm, but uh, if we merge... Mr. Uh, Leacock, are you going to publish my book or not? Well, we wouldn't want to inconvenience you, would we? I mean, if you have other offers... Inconvenienced I mean? me? Ha! You brought me 4,000 miles just to tell me you don't want to inconvenience me? No, 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 please don't misunderstand me. I mean, we'd still be delighted. Delighted hell you are, you're not. Well, almost a certainty, but on <laughs> our next year's list. Oh, fine. Just fine. I suppose you, uh, you want me to wait around in that damn flea bag until next year? Oh, but heavens, no, we wouldn't want you to do that. Look, I r really am terribly sorry about all this. Look, you apologize one more time. I swear I'm, I'm, I'm gonna belt you. That's all I've heard from you and your friend Pedley ever since I got here. Sorry, tomorrow, maybe. Uh, look, I really am awfully sorry about this, Mr. Walton, but, uh, uh, excuse me. <coughs> of course. Mr. Warden, we'd be happy to provide your return passage. However, it may take a little time to arrange. In the meanwhile, we had hoped that you might, uh, you know, you might view this as a <laughs> sort of a holiday. Holiday? Yes. Mr. Leacock, I... <laughs> Bravo, Wells. You were splendid. A perfect bastard. <laughs> I did my best, sir, to portray an English gentleman. You don't mind if I get a little stoned? Not at all. Under the circumstances, I think it's quite appropriate. Tell me, Warden, have you any prospects? Oh, sure, yeah. All lousy. My marriage broke up last year. Walked out of my job two weeks ago, and now this uh, rotten luck. Um, I was going to ask you if you couldn't find employment with the military establishment. I'm no saint. Military theory is fascinating, but war is stupid. You admire a number of generals in your book. Oh, losers. Hannibal, Napoleon, Lee, Rommel. Rommel rather than von Brunstedt? A rather romantic choice, isn't it? Why? Oh, von Brunstedt was far the superior strategist, really. A machine. Rommel was only a man, spectacular, but capable of gross error. Oh, wait a minute now. Uh, Rommel never had the command von Rundstedt had. I'll be von Rundstedt. You be Rommel. Mm -hmm. The objective. Equal firepower. What's the tactical situation? I'll attack, you defend. All right, Field Marshal, make your move. Why are you sad? It's a good party. It's a great party, Carlo. But your husband goes off to discuss business affairs and leaves you standing here alone. Stop playing, Carlo. Are you going to make this deal with him? Uh, your husband is something of a financial risk, but he has assets. 
Why exactly did you ask us here? You know, you're a very beautiful woman. Without question, you are his greatest asset. You could help your husband a great deal. I was never part of the deal. Warden, you are first rate. Another hour and you'd have me boxed again. Oh, I'm a genius. All I need is my <laughs> own army. All you need is the right war. All you really need is to kill your life. A real victory in your life. Not a paper one. So do I. A real life smashing victory. Here, here. You, you say you're no saint. Uh, are you crippled by moral scruples? <laughs> What's that mean? Would you steal? Oh, I thought there was a chance of getting caught. Pity. Pity. You have more daring as a theorist. Are you some kind of a crook? Oh, heavens no, old man. I promise you, I've never stolen anything in my life. But I'm thinking about it. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about stealing $10 million. You know you're drunker than I am. <laughs> You like champagne, Sylvia? Very much. Your wife has expensive tastes. A pity you cannot afford them. You can afford them, but you can't always enjoy them. Hmm. <laughs> ecco! Prendete! Prendete! <laughs> Graziella, è Graziella, bravo Graziella. Foreigners, old boy. Graziella. <laughs> Are you going? Come back. You can't leave now. Why not? Well, we'll all be going soon. Your wife finds us rather vulgar, I think. Decadent. Well, you said it. I didn't. Oh, oh. <laughs> no guile, no hypocrisy. Very virtuous. Hey, now, wait a minute. Your wife is very beautiful, my friend. And desirable. I mean it as a compliment when I say there isn't a man here who wouldn't give a fortune to possess her. There isn't a man here. He's only joking. You know he plays games. Carlo, don't... There are two things I never joke about. Sensuality and money. <laughs> <laughs> My dear, I think you are one of those that likes to, uh, as our English friends say, run with the pack and hunt with the hounds. I'd like to prove it. You've asked me for money on many occasions. Here's your opportunity. I will bid for your wife. Give me your earrings. I raise my bid. Your bracelet. And your necklace, please. The necklace.
This alone is worth twice the amount you need. I've closed the bidding. It's up to you. All right, Carlo. I accept. You've won. Where do you want me? Anywhere you wish. Let's get this charade over with. Uh, you've forgotten something. The jewelry. I want you to fetch them, my dear. I've set my heart on it. I really believe you have. Sylvia! Hey, wait a minute. Go away. Wait a minute. Huh? Please. I want to help you. Where are you staying? Where are you going? We were on that arrow's yacht. And I might just go back and sink it. Oh, no. Let me do it for you. You're drunk. And it's very American. You know, well, the good part of me is, but I'm a man of principle. No strings attached. Look, first, I'll take you back to my hotel. But did you say principle? It, uh, oh, no, you don't understand. I'm, I'm going to get your room. I, <laughs> well, I know you're married. I, uh, I'm not a home wrecker. A, a what? A home wrecker. Is that funny? American, I trust you. Oh. I'm uh, sorry about the room. Oh, it's fine. I'm Mike Warden. Oh, I'm Sylvia Giraud. Oh, I'm uh, at the end of the hall in 36, if you uh, need me. What's the matter? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Sylvia, the, uh, the lady that took this room, she's gone. Ah, oh, yes. She left uh, just uh, one minute ago with a gentleman. What kind of a gentleman? I didn't notice, signore. Scusi. Yeah, but... Yeah, but uh, for, forget it. Mr. All right, all right. I'm in at your own risk. I owe you this. Ah, one of the Borgia ladies. Cappuccino with a spot of brandy. Bit strong for this time of day, but it will bring you up. It's all right. I just need enough strength to get me to the station. Where are you going? Home. Figure I have just enough left to get me there if I carry my own bags. You didn't act last night as though you were leaving. It was last night. Anyway, what's it to you? I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood. No, no, you didn't. No, that's my department. What happened, Michael? If I hassle to help you out, and five minutes later you take off with some other uh, guy. It's that simple. I had to go back to the boat to put an end to my marriage. And it wasn't easy. Does that satisfy you? Does it satisfy that poor slob you were married to? A few bucks for a room doesn't give you the right to criticize me. Or my personal life. 
Hey, uh, wait a minute. I, uh, think maybe I owe you an apology. I don't suppose that comes easy to you. No, no, nothing does. What are you gonna do now? I don't know. No family, no, uh, friends. No money, no job, no history of employment. Not even a national health card. Look, I got a few bucks left if it'll help you at all. I didn't come here for that. What did you come for? and no prospects. Maybe there's something if we've got the guts. You're not crippled by moral scruples. Sometimes I limp a little. All right, you wait right here. I've got to see a man. Why don't you go and find out? Gold bullion, heavy, unwieldy, and totally worthless. Unless, of course, someone knew where to dispose of it. And you do. It's being sent from the Bahnhofstrasse Bank in Zurich to Tangier, East Africa. The loan is guaranteed by Britain, a fact which, for reasons of state, has been kept secret. That is obviously to our advantage. The route, Zurich, Rome, Tanzia. You mean by air? The gold would be placed aboard a chartered excursion flight. You want us to steal an airplane? Unheard of, bold, totally unexpected. That's why we're going to succeed. <clears throat> That's crazy. I mean, what about the passengers? Tourists, invariably unarmed, and potentially hostages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, look, no, robbery's one thing, but... <laughs> I can assure you, no one will be harmed, old boy. In fact, it is certain to be the most exciting event of their collectively drab little lives. Ten million can be converted on the international black market to perhaps four or five million. Fifty-fifty. Not quite. I have a condition. No condition, no deal. Oh? There's a girl. She's got to be in on it. Oh, no, I'm afraid not, old boy. It's quite impossible. Oh, no. Oh. Goodbye. Well, uh, you can't be serious. We really don't need anyone else. I haven't planned it that way. She's bright, she's clever, and uh, she can have half of my share. Our first and most important task will be to arrange for the disposal of the gold. I'll put you in contact with the gentleman regarding that. Incidentally, my messages will arrive in code. Childishly simple, I assure you, but effective. You play the music, and we do all the dancing. Yeah, just, uh, where will you be? Oh, I shall be in London. That's cozy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm a bit too well known in some circles to do anything else. Family ties, you see. Well, if you're concerned about your standing in the social register, I'd suggest that you get into another line of work. Oh, we have no such thing as a social register. But the eccentricities of the upper classes does not as yet include the hijacking of Her Majesty's treasure.
Bradshaw. We wanted you to meet Mr. Charles Crittenden of Lloyd. Mr. Pedley, Mr. Whistler. How do you do? Sir. I've been telling Charles you're the most dependable officer in Her Majesty's Secret Service and that his gold couldn't be in better hands if I were in charge myself. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Young Worcester here is next in line after John. He's responsible for some of the unorthodox procedures we'll be using, this excursion flight business. Well, sir, it seemed unlikely they would steal the gold if they didn't know that it was being transported by an excursion flight. Uh, that was our first thinking. Good thinking, too, Worcester. Huh. Um, might I ask who you mean by uh, they? Well, anyone. Oh, anyone who is quite insane enough to uh, try and get their hands on it. Well, there was just one other thing that concerned us. The use of a comparatively old propeller-driven aeroplane. Essential, absolutely essential within the limitations of our plan. You see, the only airfield in Tanzia is not yet equipped to handle jets. Uh, rather premature and demanding their independence, if you ask me. Well, surely, sir, we will gain in deception what we lose in mobility? Oh, look at it this way, Charles. If you're concerned about this poor old bird falling out of the sky, gold can't be transmuted, either by fire, water, or explosion. It simply changes shape, so the whole aircraft might be utterly destroyed. Everyone on board fried to a cinder, but the gold, happily, would be retrieved. Uh, sir, I hadn't considered that. You're very quiet today, John, considering you're in charge. Sorry, sir. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I'd been having second thoughts about the entire plan. Oh, I see, John. What do you mean? Oh, I'm sorry, Wister. I know how much time you've spent on it. But I've given it some careful thought. And I just feel that we're not constituted to the unorthodox around here. I favor regular procedures, the way we did it in the war. Perhaps that is why the war took five years. Wister, please. But, John. We simply can't rearrange things now. We simply can't. Perhaps so. I, I should have spoken sooner. Yes, you should indeed. That is, if there's any basis to your... Oh, I don't really. I... Well, if, uh, if you gentlemen will excuse me, uh, there's some last-minute details. Thank you. You uh, don't suppose there's something in Pedley's concern? I mean, after all, at Lloyd's, we're a bit on the conventional side ourselves. Nothing at all to be concerned about, Charles. I give you my word, don't we, Wister? Oh, certainly, sir. Certainly. John's due to retire in a year or so. Deservedly. He's extremely um, dependable. You see. What? Seven. Seven. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Six. Nine. Ten. Seventeen. Seventeen. Would you sit me, please? Mm. Certainly, Mrs. Uh... Moore. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Moore. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Moore. Of St. Andrews, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. All the pleasures of home, almost. Six. 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 Seventeen. Seventeen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Fourteen. Fourteen. First number fourteen. First number four, yes. yes. Your... First task will be the most crucial to the entire plan, hence the most difficult. You are to contact a former black shirt general named Aldo Ferranti. Ten million. Surely you exaggerate. No, it's worth at least that much in today's international market value. We'll need four trucks, a flatbed and three other heavy-duty pieces. Trucks are no problem. You can have a dozen if you need them. I have a more serious consideration. Whether or not 
You are a madman. Do not underestimate his intelligence, greed, or his contemptible, though I suppose predictable, capacity for betrayal. He is, however, one of the few men in Italy equipped to handle the gold. Oh, forgive me. I must eat regularly, so modestly. Half of my stomach was left in Ethiopia in 1937. I was a general, you know. Yeah, I guess that. <laughs> Do you drink? Smoke? You know, no, hardly at all. And never at the same time. <laughs> and this young lady, she is your... I happen to be Mrs. Moore. Oh, forgive me. We have children? Uh, uh, seven. All sons. Magnificent. Please. Do come in. This side, please. I trust people who look upon their bodies as temples of the soul and treat them accordingly. We often say that, too. Don't we, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, temples. Please, help yourself. Grazie. I do not indulge in the frivolity that characterizes some of my countrymen. They seem to cherish their vices. I despise them. But then that is my tragedy. A strong man in a country that proved too weak for the tasks we had before us. I did not fail my country. It failed me. How much do you want for your gold? Keep nothing on paper. Memorize this exactly. You are to ask for... 30% of international market value, one-third on delivery in Swiss francs and the balance to be drawn on any bank in Zurich in three months. That is over a million dollars in cash. Mm. Quite impossible, of course. But perhaps we can agree on a somewhat smaller sum, say $50,000 in Turkish piastres. Be prepared to bargain at length. Ferranti will like that. Impress him with your knowledge of currency exchange. But be hard, be resolute. Remembering, of course, that you are unarmed. Your husband is extremely persuasive. I'm afraid he was too shrewd for me. He's very kind, General, but I'm sure it was your generosity that gave us the advantage. Your lovely wife is mistaken, I'm sorry to say. I'm not generous, nor am I so gullible. You didn't fool me, Mr. Moore. You wish me to think you're amateurs. However, I know who I'm dealing with. Non preoccupatevi. Le leggi dell'omertà sono sacre anche per me. Yeah. Grazie. What did he say? He thinks we've been sent by the Mafia. You will next travel to Albany, near the Austrian border, where someone will meet you on the path leading from the railroad station, promptly at 5 p.m. the 21st. You are to meet one Anton Pfeiffer, a smuggler who is something of a legend in these mountains. The police have sought him for years, so be careful. Fight! And you! Team life! Oh, my! You've blown it. You must be after Pfeiffer. Rolf! Rolf here! Rolf dead! Your passports, please. Here. In Ordnung. How do you do? I am 
I'm from Fessel. Well, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Moore. How do you do? <laughs> this is Rolf, brother of my wife. Grüß dich, Aunt. Grüß Gott. Uh, and this is my daughter, Ingeborg. In my trade, you always hope for a son, but you make do with what you have. Ingeborg. Ingeborg. You talk about using three trucks. A lot of gold. How much is there? <laughs> well, that's my business. I'm offering you cash. $5,000 now, $5,000 on delivery, and $15,000 when we collect on the gold. I have another suggestion. No cash, a percentage. I will run the risk you pay me in gold. 10% of what we carry. There's an old church built like a fortress. Go there. I'll send a certain fair-haired chap with dubious background. We need him. in the war. But modest to a fault. I have a business. I'm a respectable citizen. Everyone knows me. I'm sorry, there must be some mistake. You know, if that's the case, you can just walk out. What do you want? Equipment. The kind you rent film companies. Ah, well, why didn't you say so? I happen to have access to the remains of an entire Panzer Division left behind by Marshal von Kessering, personal friend of mine, incidentally. A fighter plane in excellent condition, fully armed. What are you talking about? I rent these things for films. I'm a neo-realist. I will also need a pilot, uh, one with combat experience. I haven't flown in years. There's nothing that makes a man so Vulnerable as a big overhead. I wonder how many film companies would do business with Obergruppenführer Albert Zeller. What do I have to do? Force down an English plane. But in heaven. I haven't done that since 1942. Our hideout is important. Try to find an old abandoned villa used by both the Germans and the Allies during the war. It's hard to find, but worthwhile. Maybe the loveliest part of Italy. Oh, Michael, it's lovely. Yeah, if you dig musty. Let's leave the stuff in the camper for now. I want to take a look around before it gets dark. Well, I'll be damned. The exact dimensions Pedley gave us. Will it do? Oh, yeah, it'll do just fine. We're gonna have to black that off, though. Now, well, let's get back to the villa. Let's go back this way. My grandfather had a place like this in Cornwall. Oh, the rich grandfather? Rich? That word wasn't in our vocabulary. We were all very poor, except for one terrible aunt. And all she left me was a ticket for London. And I've been making my own way ever since. With Paul Giraud. How long do I have to pay for it? What? You know bloody well what. For Paul, Adero, all of that. 
forget it. I wish you would. Why won't you sleep with me? Because you keep asking me. I am not asking. We've been practically living together for weeks. You're not that innocent. You puritanical bastard. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Damn it, I'm sorry. Who are offer you? Let me go. I'm sorry I'm being so damned American. Oh, Michael, what has that got to do with it? Well, there's a kind of a paranoia that goes with being born there. We're a rude people, part of our heritage. Oh, Michael, I'm awfully tired of your excuses for being boorish. I happen to love you. That's the only excuse I've got.
bells are. Just a chastity bell. Oh, I can hear that much. There's someone in the house. Do you mean the police? I don't think the police would be ringing a dinner bell. Dinner is served, children. John Pedley. You weren't supposed to be here till tomorrow. That's why I came today. surprises, aren't you? Oh, stop frowning, Michael. At least we've been caught on flagrant by a gentleman. Exactly. Michael. I'm envious, but uncritical. That's the loveliest kind of compliment, John. Look, if you're interested, everything's all set on this end. I've always deplored the American custom of discussing business at dinner. Uh, Wells, you may pour the wine, please. Well, I'll be damned. Yes, sir. Wells has been in my service for many years. He's very dependent. What's the matter? I've been conned. Of course. Lee got the better of General Hooker at Chancellorsville in much the same way, didn't he? I read it in your book. How do you know I won't get up and just walk right out of here? Because war is a study of character, my dear Warden. And I think I know yours pretty well. Am I right? Score one for you. Well, the blood is running high. What should we toast? To whatever brought us together. Then, to our illusions, particularly those we've lost. No, John. To those we have left. I must say, Mr. Pedley, it's a very efficient operation. Most impressive. Thank you, Mr. Crittenden. I'll feel better when it's airborne. You know, John, Charles and I have had a little chat, and we both agree we'd feel better if you went along on the flight. Uh, me, sir? But what about the other arrangements? No bother. I've already sent Hoffington ahead. I want you to stay with the goal. Oh, of course, sir. Uh, certainly. Any, anything you say, gentlemen. We are about ready, I think. Well, goodbye, John. Her Majesty's treasure couldn't be in better hands. Sure. Not to mention Her Majesty's insurance interest. <laughs>
north of Italy. Already? Hmm? Attention, Captain. Flight 502. Stand. There he is. Fetch Mr. Pedley. Yes, sir. Descent. What's that? I don't know. He wants us to land. My God! Landing struck 12 miles south, southeast. Do as he says. Tell that lot to keep seated and keep quiet. Tell them we may have an unscheduled landing. Contact the Zurich Tower. Yes, sir. It's all right, everybody. Please don't panic. There's nothing to worry about. Now, come on out of there. We're landing. You don't say. Rome already? Mayday, mayday. Flight 502. Zurich Tower. Mayday, mayday. Flight 502. Mayday, mayday. Zurich Tower! Oh! Five or two. Five or two. What is your position? They are being forced down by a fighter with Albanian markings. For, for, forced down with an Al Albanian? Charles. Charles, try, try and get the foreign office for me. The foreign office. Yeah, the foreign I'm sorry, sir, but we seem to have lost contact. There's no response. I don't understand. Do you sure you may be stopped up with something? Oh. Hello? Hello? You are your landing gear. Ow. Is it possible to land there? It's just about possible. Then please do. Okay, you better go back and strap in, please. Thank you. It's all right, everybody. There's nothing to worry about. What is it? It's over here, too, sir. Why are we sitting here? Now, let's not have any panic, particularly among those of us in the Queen's service. Sir, look, over here. You hold it steady for crying out loud.
Nobody's going to be hurt. If you follow my instructions, exactly. I'll give you 60 seconds to throw down your weapons and start unloading the gold. Gold? Keith, what gold? Uh, uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, take your seats, please. Madam, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you no one will be harmed. I am a representative of Her Majesty's Secret Service, and I ask your cooperation. Thank you. 30, 30 seconds. seconds. No choice but to comply. Do as he says. I suppose so. Will you get back? All right, throw your gun down. Get down with the letter. Go on, quickly. On the double. Use the loading ramp. denied. What do you expect them to do, you damn fool? We can tell the Foreign Office to go to blazes. I want the RAF and I want them now. Political poppycock, that's all I can muster in London. We didn't handle things this way during the war, I can tell you. We went out and faced the enemy. I think it's the Albanian, sir. I'm getting through to Milan on the high frequency. Oh, thank God. They'll have planes over us in a matter of minutes. You're very resourceful. Damn. What's the matter? No good. It won't stop. The batteries and caps Believe it. We'll take part of the gold in the camper. Leave it! There's been a change in plans. We're going to take part of the gold in the camper. But, Mike! Mike, it's too dangerous! Out of here. We'll take the rest. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Give me the flare gun.
Michael, you must be mad. The shortest route to safety is the road to the enemy hill. General Diane. agreed that you're the man to retrieve the gold. If anyone can do it, you can. The man of the hour, so to speak. Thank you, sir. Contrary-wise, if you don't, I need hardly tell you. I understand fully, sir. Chief, not An excursion trip, eh? <laughs> Oh, uh, Mr. Crittenden, how are you, sir? Uh, Mr. Bedley, I trust you have some sort of progress to report. Now, Charles, we've only just got started. You must... Oh, but I have, sir. You have? Oh, quite some progress to report. Oh, good. Uh, may I have your attention, please, gentlemen? Um, we were able to lock off an area of approximately 30 miles within an hour. The hideaway of the hijackers was easily found here, an abandoned villa. Worcester, um, would you uh, be seated, sir? Uh, may I have the shutters closed, please? Thank you. Projection, please. We also found the tank, a German Mark IV, in common use in Italy during the late misunderstanding. Two trucks were found abandoned at the villa. One apparently suffering a motor malfunction. These tire tracks proved conclusively that the gold was transferred to three separate vehicles. Note those dark areas, unused crude oil. The first vehicle that we are looking for is an oil tanker. The depth of these tracks suggests that our second vehicle is a truck of some five tons in weight. Samples of decayed food were detected. Therefore, our second vehicle is most likely a garbage truck of some sort. May I have the shutters open now, please? Thank you. Ingenious. We're dealing with a warped, but absolutely brilliant mind. I couldn't agree more, sir. Unfortunately, the third vehicle remains a total mystery to us. It's an impressive beginning, but uh, do you have any idea who might be behind this affair? Not an inkling, sir. Oh. Uh, I have a theory about that, sir. Um, if you'd like to hear it, Mr. Crittenden. Oh, Lord Henshaw. By all means. It is uh, incomprehensible that the thieves could have planned and executed this robbery without inside information. Now, this could have come from a number of sources. First, the uh, Van Hofstrasse Bank, for instance. Or even someone in your own concern. I don't believe that for a moment. Well, 
I was going to add that the Thebes knowledge was too detailed, too intricate to that. You've overlooked another source, Wester. The intelligence office itself. But, but, but that is precisely what I was going to suggest. Yes, well, whoever is behind it, I'm afraid we're still a long way from recovering the gold. Completely in the dark. <laughs> I don't understand. Why didn't they go directly to Ferranti's? We were double-crossed. Well, why didn't Pedley anticipate this? He knew everything else about these people. Maybe he did. I tell you, it was a priest. That is preposterous, Dietrich. Oh, God, why don't you tell us the truth? I'm a German citizen. You better bloody well talk, or we will give you over to some people who are not gentlemen like ourselves. That's enough for now, Wester. Let him stew a bit. Oh, Lord Henshaw, now this man could tell us a great deal about this case. I protest the manner in which this entire investigation is being handled. You heard, Mr. Pedley, now be a good boy. Uh. Yeah. Well, I, for one, on behalf of Lloyd's, couldn't possibly be happier about Mr. Pedley's handling of this affair. In three days, he's recovered in excess of two-thirds of the gold. I don't know how you did it. Uh, I think I can guarantee that in a few days, Mr. Quinton, we'll have it all with the mastermind. Mm -hmm. Splendid. A few more like you on board, John. We might never have lost India. Smells like a mattress burning. Well, I never said I could cook, did I? If you'd let me open a window or a door... Oh, it's better we die of salami suffocation and spend 30 years in an Italian jail. <laughs> oh, I know it's all getting on our nerves, but... <sighs> Couldn't we at least be nice to each other? <laughs> well, at least I tried. Oh, uh, so... So Dietrich's the last straw. It's got to be peddly. Doesn't make sense any other way. Michael, I've got to tell you something. When a woman says that. Now, please listen. That morning in Venice, 
You wanted to know where I'd been, and I told you I'd gone back to the yacht. Well, I did that. But the man I went off with was John Pedley. What are you trying to tell me? He wanted you to come into this. And he felt certain you would if I was part of it. And I thought I did it for you. Michael. Michael. A hundred and eighty pounds of gristle, acting like Winnie the Pooh. All for me? Wasn't there just a little self-interest involved? How much did you get for me? I never asked. I was alone and broke, and we were in the same boat as I remember. Uh, so now I'm supposed to feel sorry for you. You don't have to feel sorry for so me. Jeff, I don't I need to your you once, feet. just once. No, right from the beginning, I've been straight with you, but you? Oh. I didn't have to tell you. I had a walk out on both of you right now. Be careful. That's exactly what John Pedley wants. I don't give a damn what John Pedley wants. Yes, I do. Y you know, it would be very satisfying to rub the suave Mr. Pedley's nose in it for a change. There's this chap on the phone, American, I believe, who demands to talk to you. He says it's frightfully urgent. What's his name? Rommel. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. I'll take it. Von Runch, that's uh, Pedley here. <laughs> oh, yes, Mr. Rommel. Well, I'm a bit surprised. Hmm? No, no, I'm, I'm afraid that wouldn't be practical. Yes. Oh, no more than an hour. All right. Andrews, uh, Wister here. Mm, uh, Mr. Pedley asked me to have you check where that last phone call originated. Uh, how much? Uh, uh, do we um, just... Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We've got an hour. I want to get you and the camper out of town and out of sight. Oh, Mike. Well, Mrs. Moore, looks like we have a little unexpected company. Another miserable, boring, dull evening. And the food was terrible. Compared to your cooking, it was a gourmet's delight. Her, and you never said a word the whole of the evening, not to anyone. What do you mean I never said a word? I asked the waiter for coffee seven times. That's only because you couldn't say cappuccino. Ha! Ha! Is this your camper? Yes, it is our camper, but it was his idea. See the world, he said. Life on the glorious open road. See the continent from a camper. Why? I'll tell you why, because there's no guest room in it for your mother. Leave my mother out of the... That's the first thing you've said that I agree with. Oh. Your passport, please. Uh, anything wrong? If what? anything wrong... Is anything right? My mother told me I should never have come on this trip with you, and she also told me that I should never have married you. And that's the only thing your mother ever said that I agree with. You! <laughs> oh. Oh. Signora. <laughs> Just a little family misunderstanding. Ma. <laughs> Signora. Grazie, signor. <laughs> a first fight. Oh, lovely. That's no reason to cry just because I hate your mother. Uh, of course, please. Oh, but prego. 
I'm sorry, lovey dove. It was all my fault. <laughs> no, it's my fault. No, it was my fault. Don't you <laughs> no, remember? It's my fault. You've been... Now that I think about it, it was your fault. Hai visto che succede a sposarsi? Peccato. È così bella. Michael, you will be careful. You know, Mr. Pedley's the one who'd better be careful. Can I trust you, Sylvia? What do you think? Risky calling me where you did, don't you think? Risky for you, maybe, but not for us. Look, Warden, I see I must speak frankly with you. Our little game is over, and we've lost. Now, there's nothing so extraordinary about that. Good men have fallen in battle before. My suggestion is that we strike our colors from the field and retire with honor intact. You bowler hats are really something. No wonder you ran half the world for 500 years. Pedley, this whole thing was a setup right from the beginning. You've sold us all out one by one. Why? Is the reward that big? 150,000 devalued pounds. 300? dollars yes. You see, my dear chap, my entire life has been lived in the most genteel poverty, so to speak. A distinguished name, certainly, but... The reward money will simply provide the kind of retirement I feel is my due after so many loyal years in the Queen's service. Now, if you just leave the gold somewhere convenient, I can guarantee there'll be no further repercussions for either you or Sylvia. No. No, I'm tired of losing, Pedley. I intend to finish what we started. That gold is going to be delivered. And if I get busted, I'm taking you with me. Look, old man, the hounds can't protect the fox forever. Is that quite clear? You've been warned. Allow me to introduce myself. I am an officer in the British Secret Service. I would have taken you for an interior decorator.
Well, she ran out on you, left you flat, didn't she? Who? Gentlemen. Sì, sì, è lui. Lo riconosciamo. È proprio lui. Grazie. A hitchhiker. I uh, gave her a lift. Oh, come now, Mr. Moore. Forged passport, stolen car. Oh, we could keep you for quite some time. Of course, it is within your power to walk out of here a free man, perhaps even share in some of the reward. Oh, I'm listening. I want to know where the rest... to a Mr. John Pedley. Okay. I can take you to the gold. Uh, oh, well, well uh, that is a very intelligent choice, Mr. Moore. Oh, uh, of course, the only one you had available. Uh, I, I want two cars and eight men immediately. What? Oh, um, uh, do we... Machina, e um, uh, auto um, uh, carbonieri, uh, subito. Uh, 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 grazie. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie, uh, e non è niente, è solamente stanca. Allora, cos'è successo? Prego. Qualcosa non va? Uh, niente. Mi scusi, signore. Sì? Uh, forse lei può prendere i miei ferri per me. Sì. Uh, sono pesanti. Ah, mm. uh, sot, uh, Sotto il sedile. Qui? Sì. Eh? Grazie. Permesso? Prego, signore. Ecco uh, i ferri. La ringrazio molto. Prego. Oh, signore, sì. uh, lei può tenere questo per me? Oh, sì, sì, sì. Oh, prego, <coughs> se lei vuole. Certo che voglio, io leggo tutto. Eh, sì, e lo spinterogio. Eh, lo spinterogio. Permette, adesso ci penso io. Due minuti e la sua macchina partirà immediatamente. Thank 
thank you for fixing the camper. Thank you for the delicious dinner, signora. Grazie a lei. Arrivederci. Dove il generale Ferranti? Eight hours already. They're not, not 19 hours. Hmm. Yeah, I make it 19 hours and seven minutes. Are you sure this is the right place? <laughs> I think we better... You... How do you say call for reinforcements? <laughs> Tragic figure, madam. I admire you. Where's the money? Of course. Abruzzi, count it for the lady. I would watch him if I were you. Of course, we kill him if we catch him. So am I. Mrs. Moore, I want you to know that I find you an extremely admirable woman. If I understand you, you're now alone in the world. Hmm? I prefer it that way, thank you. And what about your seven sons? Uh, we'll, we'll manage. You'll get rid of the camper, won't you? Thank you. You did not understand me. I was offering you my protection. I'll accept your offer, General, when I can no longer protect myself. Abruzzi, that woman is a tarantula. My dear. You don't seem surprised to see me. No, John. Mm. You're right on time. Just part of your strategy I anticipated. I see. Where's Michael? Don't worry. There's a car waiting. Uh, Lieutenant. Crown's exhibit number one. You may call your men. Attenzione, attenzione. Siete circondati. Attenzione. Avanti! 
Lord Henshaw. Come in here and shut the door. Lord Henshaw, I have just come across the most disturbing series Where's of facts. Where's What the devil did you think you were doing arresting my agent? Uh, your agent? Yes. Lord Henshaw, this man is one of the thieves. He knows where the gold is hidden and who is behind the whole affair. We have the gold. All of it. And the mastermind, General Ferranti. The man we have wanted for many years. I would like to shake your hand. Uh, this is incredible. Mr. Pedley, you had no right, sir. Really, Wister, that's a bit too much. Me, young man, and we hear no more about it. John, come back as soon as you can. They'll all be waiting to touch you in London. Well done indeed, John. Aventi, ragazzi. <laughs> limited experience. Women are such quixotic little creatures. <laughs> Sylvia did this for you. Do you trust me now? What do you think? Half. Half the reward money. You must be joking, old boy. It would be the gentlemanly thing to do, John. Well, to tie up loose ends, perhaps percentage, ten percent, twenty. A third. A third? Well, if it'll put an end to this whole tawdry affair, very well. Delivery in London. You have my word. You'll be hearing from us. Reason will be certain of that. Ciao. Scusi, signore. You sign a receipt for gold taken at Ferrantis. It's a formality. Besides, I never expect to see beautiful 74 bars of the purest gold. What's that? 74 bars? Exactly. Well, there must be 75. There were 75 in the camper. I counted them myself. Sir John? Uh, uh, well, madam, uh, in about an hour. Oh, congratulations. Mm. Thank you, madam. I'll pass it on to send. We're uh, <laughs> just on our way. He's, oh, well, uh, Wells, we have a little uh, a gift for Sir John. Uh -huh. Oh, that's uh, very, 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 very kind. Whoop! That's you, Jimmy. Very kind of it, sir. Uh, <laughs> from Mr. and Mrs. Warden. All right, well, I'll tell him that. And thank you so much. I'm, I'm sure he'll be. He One hundred and twenty. 
$20,000. Gert van Rundstedt? Bloody step the way. And well, guard that present with your life. All right, sir, I will. Hope he remembers. Once a night is enough. <laughs> 